Today's reading is Psalm 119, verses 105 to 128. If you're familiar with the book of Psalms, you'll know that Psalm 119 is the longest at 176 verses. We don't normally read the whole psalm all at once, though. It's divided into 22 sections of eight verses each. And although it's not apparent in the English translation, it's very formally and intricately structured. Reading the English, you will notice the theme, the overarching theme that runs through of giving thanks for the word of God or the commandments, the law, the ordinances or many other synonyms. As well as this, each section begins with the next letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's an acrostic poem, in fact. Some Bibles head each section with the Hebrew letter, Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth, and so on. It must have taken enormous skill, artistic, spiritual, linguistic, to compose such poem. Think Shakespeare in English literature. The psalm is a song of praise to the Torah, the law, the whole expression of God's love in the world. Don't think of law as a list of do's and don'ts. There are those in the Old Testament, but Jews use the term very much more widely than that. It means the divinely gifted order in the world, the system of how things ought to be, how God meant things to be, from the beginning in goodness, truth and love, rather than the chaos and misery of evil. Reading the psalm as a Christian, one can't help relating it to Christ, who for us is the ultimate fulfilment of the law, who is the word of God, the light of the world, the new Moses, bringing in the new covenant. He is the treasure hidden in the field, the pearl of great price, the loveliest thing we could ever imagine, and then some. As you read Psalm 119, you could try substituting Jesus or Christ for the words law or commandment or the other words, and use it as an expression of devotion to our Lord. All that is said of the law finds its crown in him. He is the light to our path. He is the joy of our heart. He is the one who gives us life, and it's to him that we turn with repentance and receive mercy and forgiveness. Notice too that the psalmist doesn't gloss over the nitty gritty of life. He refers constantly to severe difficulties, life-threatening ones even sometimes. And yet he draws strength through all that from the word of God. This is how he copes and survives with all that is around him, all the evils that he sees in the world around. He focuses constantly, repeatedly on the goodness of God as seen in the law. How much more can we do this now in the time of the new covenant, the New Testament, when we have the law personified in our Lord Jesus Christ? the one who lived our life and died our death, and who conquered death and brought us to eternal life.